In this video, we're going to be discussing pressure and ideal gases. I'm also going to talk about a uh, bed of nails. That's why I put this one right here or there. So let's look at a formula that you get in your data booklet. And it's a nice, easy equation. Just pressure equals force spread out over an area. So it's pressure equals force over area. All right, let's make sure we know what kind of units to be using here. So pressure is measured in pascals. PA for short. Force is in newtons as it's usual. And area is in meters squared. So you could also say that the pressure is in newtons per meter squared. That's another way to say it. Now, why is this important? A lot of things, uh, but for example, just one way you might understand it. You ever seen, you know, videos of someone or seen someone, you know, laying on a bed of nails and you think, oh, they must be really good at handling pain. No, it's just simple physics. If you imagine this object right here, let's say this is you. Uh, maybe it's like your bum and you're sitting on a bed of nails. Why do you want to sit on a bed of nails instead of just one nail? Let's discuss that because I think it's going to help us. So let's just say you uh, you look at this one right here. You say, okay, well, um, if I have my uh, object here, let's say it's the same object, so same force. Well, the thing is, if the area is small, what does that do? If you take a number divided by a small number, the answer then is big. So the pressure is high and pressure pierces. So pressure is what sort of puts a hole in your bum or whatever it else that's so not good. Whereas, by contrast, if you have a bed of nails, a lot of people might think, oh, that means it hurts a lot more. There's a lot more nails, but actually no. Because of the same forces there, if your area is larger, what does that do? It makes the pressure lower. And that means it doesn't you know, uh, hurt you necessarily. You have to have enough nails. But this is why the area over which this pressure is applied is really important. This pressure is a force divided by an area. So the area is also important there. So that's actually why you can sit on or lay on a bed of nails, but you shouldn't sit on a single nail because, well, that's bad because it's very high pressure. Let's go a little bit further here and look at the kinetic model. So we're going to assume that, uh, for example, little particles right here, we're going to assume uh, a few things here. Let me just assume a few particles here that are just sitting in a box. And let's just say we have uh, these little particles they are bouncing around. They're going that way, maybe this way, maybe that way. These little particles stuck in a box, they're just bouncing off each other. And we're going to talk about what, uh, what's called the kinetic model. So we're going to take a real gas and approximate it to this what's called an ideal gas. This is going to make our math simpler, and we're going to find out then obviously when we can really make this assumption and when it doesn't hold. So these are the important assumptions, especially these three right here, I think are the most important ones here. We're going to assume, first of all, there's no force between these molecules. These little particles don't attract or repel each other at all. Um, we're going to assume they're all the same size, same mass, because in real life, of course, there's lots happening. And we're going to assume the elastic collisions, which means they bounce completely off each other. They don't stick. This is going to make this gas then ideal. At least these are some of the assumptions we're going to make. Because if we can approximate a gas to being ideal, then our lives get a lot easier. So for example, uh, let's look at then the pressure. That's why I put this in here. <laughs> Don't put yourself under so much pressure. It's because it's carbon. Turns out if you put carbon under a lot of pressure, it becomes a diamond. <laughs> so if I've got these different particles, again, let's say I've just got this one particle right here. I mean, I've got a whole bunch of other ones, of course. And they're all moving, like I said before, in kind of random directions, bouncing off each other. But let's just look at this one right here that comes in. If it hits the surface and bounces off, well, that means we know something about how it's going to behave because it's going to change momentum. And if you change momentum, you have an impulse. Remember, J equals F delta T equals delta P. What this means is that if you have a change in momentum, that means you must apply, there must be some sort of resultant force. And if there's a force, we just learned that if there's a force, over a certain area, then there's probably a pressure. So as you see, we're gonna we're gonna be looking at this and saying, hey, because there's a change in momentum, that means there's an applied force. Because of that, there's a pressure on the walls. This is the key thing. So we've got an equation again. This is in your data booklet, and it goes like this: the pressure is equal to just one third times rho times v squared. So what is this? Rho is the density of the gas. Okay, so that'll be a density, remember, is in kilograms per meters cubed. Okay, we're going to V, which is the average translational speed of the molecule. So it's basically telling you something about how fast they're going. I mean, it's an average because some go faster and slower. And P is the pressure in pascals. So what it tells you then, this is the important thing, by the way. Oh, I'll put a green square around it. 
What really is important here is this, that if you have a higher temperature, let's look at what happens here. So if the temperature is higher, what does that mean? Well, remember that the uh, kinetic energy is related to the uh, speed. Remember, because uh, kinetic energy is half mv squared. So you can say this, if the T goes up, that means the V goes up. And if V goes up, does that make sense? Then you have more pressure. That means P goes up. Okay, so if the temperature goes up, remember temperature and, and average speed at least are related. So if the temperature rises, that means the average speed of these uh, particles rises. And if the speed rises, that means the pressure then goes up. So that means higher temperature means higher speed, means more collisions, means more pressure. This actually hopefully is going to be explained if I show you this one right here. It's again in a PHET lab here. If I look at ideal gases. So let's just, uh, for example, just pump in some particles here. So we've got some regular particles here. They're just going to bounce around. And maybe I'll put even more. So I'll put in lots of them. So now with these particles, what I can do then, of course, I can just watch. They're going to be hitting the wall. So they're going to be applying some kind of pressure. Can you see this right here? This pressure, they've got in atmospheres. But of course, I can have it in kilopascals. I mean, it's 1,000 pascals. So here we go. So here's this value right here. And you notice over time, it should roughly average up. Because remember, this pressure is being calculated by you know the change in momentum of these particles. Notice some are going faster than others. And they're all ideal particles. They're just bouncing off each other, not attracting or repelling. Well, now let's increase the temperature. Remember what that should do. Increasing the temperature should make them go faster. But watch carefully the pressure. Okay, I want, I'm curious about the pressure. The temperature, of course, goes up. But look at the pressure now. It goes up. Well, that's because they're going faster, and then they bounce off the wall, so they're giving more push. Of course, if you have too much pressure, you can break something. So you know this thing might actually break and explode or something like that if it gets too hot inside. So this, oh, see, I just broke the top. So that means, okay, now the particles escaped. So do you see how this kind of works here? Is it this one right here? I think it's a good uh, animation to show this, but higher temperature, they go faster, so there's more pressure. Okay. And finally, just a last little thing right here. When can we approximate a real gas uh, by an ideal gas? In other words, when can we say a real gas is behaving like an ideal gas? Well, if we have very low pressure in it, because if there's low pressure, that means there's less intermolecular forces. You know, they're not attracting each other, repelling each other. And also at high temperature, because again, high temperature, they're just bouncing so fast, there's less forces as well. Those are some of the key sort of pieces, at least I think these two are the, the main two you should really know about. So this here explains a little bit more about what we've just talked about, pressure, which is force over area, and how it relates to um, what happens in a, an ideal gas right here. This is the equation that relates the average translational speed of the molecules to the pressure. And there we go.